Hey guys, welcome back to another video. If you're new to my channel, hi, my name is Miranda and I teach about everything and anything related to the trucking industry and how to navigate it. So if this is a topic that interests you, feel free to subscribe down below. Like many of you, I am constantly trying to get a better understanding of what is going on in the economy as a whole, as well as in the freight market. What is changing? Why is it changing? What does it mean for our trucking industry? If any of you watched my previous video about how we were scammed, I say there that when I need to be, I become like Sherlock Holmes. My obsession with numbers has always been there because numbers and data simply make sense. But that obsession became amplified once I realized that something is amiss in our trucking industry. Statistics, data, facts, figures all make me feel like I'm getting closer to an answer to our freight recession problem. So today we're going to be looking at the macroeconomic conditions and see how they have an effect on the trucking industry conditions. Basically, we're going to be measuring the health of the current situation. Ready? Let's go. Okay, before we start, I have to say this again because I actually feel really bad. If you have emailed me and you have not yet received a response from me, I do apologize. Even with my perpetual lack of sleep and basically no days off for the past three years, there is simply not enough time for me to do everything. But just so you guys know, I appreciate every single email I get and my goal is to provide a detailed explanation or a detailed answer to your questions. And that sometimes takes a little bit of time. So please bear with me. I promise I'll get back to you. Anyway, let's go ahead and get started. And as I said in the beginning, I want to focus on the macroeconomic conditions. If you guys are not sure what that is, macroeconomics deal with large scale or general economic factors. Why is this important to understand? Well, because positive macroeconomic variables will stimulate economic growth. It will also create financial stability within the economy and encourage industries to expand. First and foremost, inflation. Inflation has been enemy number one in 2022 because it can trigger a recession. How? Well, because as prices for services and goods increase over time, the purchasing power of consumers gets eroded. Now let's look at the chart right here. Now this is the percent change for major food categories from October 2021 until October 2022. So you can see like cereals and bakery products increased by almost 16%. Then there is dairy that increased by 15.5%. Other food at home, 15.4%. So as you can see, the price of the bare necessities is increasing quite a bit. Here is another chart that actually shows you the dollar amounts for the different foods. For example, right here, eggs. A dozen eggs, right? This is this blue line right here. Right here, you will see it. Eggs used to cost on average about a dollar and eighty-two cents, and right now, right here, it's three dollars and forty-two cents per dozen eggs. So, in short, what ends up happening is people, the average person in the United States, or actually all over the world now are going to spend more money, but actually buy less product. And this is something we really feel in our industry. We are always hoping that there will be freight available for us to transport. And the ideal scenario is when there is more freight than trucks in the market, because that means that load rates are going up. But when there is inflation and because of the crazy prices, people are spending more, but purchasing less, that means there is less freight in the market for us to transport. To top it off, don't forget about the things that are not necessary. These things, food is necessary for survival, right? But there are things that go on a dry van, on a flatbed that are not always necessities. And if people are spending more on the necessary things they need to survive, like food and medicine, that means that they're no longer interested in the unnecessary items. So let's take a look at the current inflation situation. As you can see right here, October, it has been going down, which is a very welcome sign. Are people celebrating? Well, not really, because it still has a ways to go and we don't really feel this change yet. But nevertheless, it's still a good sign. The next macroeconomic indicator we'll look at is the CPI or the Consumer Price Index, which will give us an even more detailed explanation of what the inflation is actually doing. Now, this index measures how the prices paid by consumers for goods and services change over time. So looking here, you will see the percent change and the blue line is all items. 
the red line is all items less food and energy so you can see for all items which is right here people are paying 7.7 percent more for all items less food and energy they're paying right now 6.3 percent more now let me show you a little bit of a more detailed chart right here it breaks down what these consumers are spending on and how much they're spending so what we can see from this chart and i encourage you guys to take a screenshot of this because i do have to zoom in a little bit but what we can see for September and October, there's not much of a decrease in general uh, from September to October in spending. But what we also notice is that the increase has not been as steep as in previous months. So yeah, this is a very welcome sign for sure, but nothing to celebrate yet. Why are we looking at this and why is it important to understand the consumer price index when looking at our industry? Well, because we can now see how the cost of living has changed for the average person in the US and actually all over the world because inflation is all over the place and what that means as I said before is that people will be spending more money than they used to but they will actually be buying less product and of course less product means less freight for us to move okay now let's look at the core capital goods orders these are durable goods that don't wear out quickly and usually have a lifespan of over three years these are things like factory hard goods computer equipment industrial machinery basically things that are used to manufacture finished products but they don't usually include things like transportation equipment why is it important to know well because this is a key indicator to the health of the economy remember businesses and consumers will place orders for uh, durable goods when they're confident that the future of the economy is going to be okay or at least will improve this statistic can actually provide insight into how busy factories might be in the near future if a business for example is expecting that the economy will improve and that they will be manufacturing more products they will be placing more orders for those durable goods so let's take a look at this chart right here well, what it shows us here is this is actually October 2022. What this chart shows us is that the core capital good orders have been increasing right here. But before you start celebrating, I want to mention one thing. This chart is based on dollar amounts. And what we cannot forget is inflation. So the question then is, are people placing more orders? Or are they just spending more money so let's take a look at the next chart right here which is extremely long so we're going to go through a couple of things right here now this chart is still in dollar amounts but it will give you a better idea so let's take a look at primary metals right here new orders now this is in billions of dollars i believe no sorry shown in millions of dollars so for example primary metals this is august this is september so new orders for primary metals that even the dollar amount went down. And this is accounting for inflation as well, right? Let's see, fabricated metal products went down, machinery went down, computers and electronic products went down, computers and related products went up a little bit, okay. Communications equipment went down, so as you can see, it's not as simple as looking at that chart and deciding that everyone is ordering a ton of stuff, no. Now let's take a look at a different chart, which is this one, which I like a little bit more, which will show you what is going on with those orders. Now this is until September, right? August versus September. And what you can see is that the durable goods orders, excluding civilian aircrafts and defense, in September actually dropped by 0.6. 0.7%. So what does this mean? This means that there is some worry about the future of the economy and the manufacturing sector may be in some trouble in the near future. Now, before I explain why this is important and how it relates to our industry, let's look at the industrial production index. What is it? Well, it's basically the output of manufacturing within the US. How much stuff is being manufactured? Well, by looking at this chart right here, you can see that in October, the industrial production went down by 0.1 percent so that is not a great sign that means less stuff is being actually produced let me show you a breakdown so we're going to be looking at september and october so let's start with wood products so you can see that from september to october in october there's less wood products that are being produced now the next point is also less what was it 
it was the non-metallic mineral products. So furniture and related products went down by 0.5 points. Uh, what increased from September to October? Aerospace and miscellaneous transportation equipment increased. Um, then there was the motor vehicles and parts that increased, electrical equipment and appliances, computer and electric products also increased, and so did machinery. Also, the fabricated metal products increased by just a little bit right here. Now let's take a look at non-durable manufacturing. Even food and beverages and tobacco products decreased in the month of October by a little bit, but it still decreased. Actually, just looking at this, okay, this didn't decrease. I'm curious to see what it is in this one. So what didn't decrease? Apparel and leather increased, which is interesting. Printing and support increased. And finally, plastics and rubber products increased as well. Everything else, including chemicals, paper, textile and product mills, they all decreased in the month of October. Basically, less of these things are being produced compared to the month of September. So why is this important for us in the trucking industry? Because that is the question, right? Because the manufacturing sector needs the trucking industry to acquire the necessary raw materials to actually produce these goods. So if the manufacturing sector is not producing as much or doesn't have a positive outlook uh, for the future of the economy and doesn't place as many orders for those durable goods. That means they do not expect a hike in production, right? It actually, we can see it right now. There are some decreases in October compared to September. And that means that in our industry, we will have less freight to transport because if they're not producing as much, they don't need as many raw materials, AKA we don't get as much freight. So what are my final two cents? Well, as of November 19th, 2022, it does not look like the economy is heading in the best of directions. And of course, that means that it will have an effect on the trucking industry as well. You guys have probably been hearing about the looming recession that will happen in early 2023, but the reality is I believe that we are already there and it will have to get a little bit worse before it starts getting better. I'll be honest with you guys, I do not enjoy making these types of videos because I'm the kind of person who tries to stay positive and bring hope and light and positivity. But the question then is, is it better to tell you a beautiful lie, give you smoke and mirrors, or instead give you the harsh reality that will help you be prepared for the future? When I started this channel about a year ago, I made it pretty clear that transparency is one of the most important things to me. And unfortunately, sometimes the best lessons come in the ugliest packages. Anyway, I think I have taken up enough of your time with this video, but I hope that you learned something you can use in your own life or in your own operations. As always, I'm wishing every single one of you guys persistence, strength, and most importantly, patience to keep moving forward. One step at a time, one foot in front of the other. You've got this. Anyway, I'll see you in the next video.